Well, hello everyone, welcome to another video. It is me, Desiree, and this video was something of a request. Um, it was, I think it was more like a question, um, but it was asking if I had ever done a if I could only keep one type video tag. And I have done this video a couple of years ago, and I actually think it was during drugstore month, uh, but a couple of years ago, so I thought, you know, I'm sure some of those products are discontinued. I didn't rewatch it, so I don't know what I picked back then. I should probably follow up with that video and see what I still think about those products. Um, but it does need a little refresh and a little update. So I have all my products here, and if you've never seen one of these videos, it's a tag, like an old school kind of tag where people would do the same kind of video and just kind of share the products that if you could only keep one, you could only keep one thing in each category, what would it be? Like what's the best thing, your holy grail, that kind of stuff. So this was really, really hard and there were so many things that I wanted to keep more than one because there are different textures, different finishes, different undertones. Like I wanted to keep so many, but I really did just keep it to one thing. And these are all just drugstore products with the exception of one, but I think the brand should be considered drugstore, but you can kind of decide that for yourselves. I'm just gonna kind of dig into the basket. I'm not going to um, go in any certain order. So right off the top, if I could only keep one face powder, it's gonna be the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear uh, Foundation in a Powder. So I almost decided to keep the, the new one from Maybelline, but that one just has a lot more coverage to it. So I find that when I use that, it's it's a full coverage day every day. And with this one, it's a lot easier to go lighter with it. It's a lot easier to go heavier if you want. It never looks cakey, never looks heavy, never looks powdery. Um, but it sets the makeup in place with, it adds a little bit of coverage to it, but I really like to use this as a setting powder, not necessarily like a powder foundation. I have made a little dent in it, if you can see that. I have this in the shade 120 Vanilla. It does have a scent, a little bit like that alcohol smell. If you've tried the Infallible Fresh Wear um, uh, foundation, this has that same scent. A little like alcohol, but it goes away right away. I don't smell it throughout the day. So if I could only keep one face powder, it's gonna be this one. But there were so many, there were so many that I was like, no, I have to pick a loose powder and a full coverage powder and a, a light setting powder and a translucent. Like I wanted to pick one in every category, but I'm like, that's not the point of the tag is to pick everything that you love. It's just one. So that's the one. That being said, Bronzer was so hard because I have so many that I love, so many that I wanted to pick, but if I could only pick one, it's gonna be the Essence Sun Club Matte Bronzing Powder. And every single time I talk about this, I always mention that I'm glad I, I rediscovered this because I used this, I think, once or twice and I didn't like it. I know the lid broke off. I used it once or twice, didn't like it, decluttered it, threw it in my little declutter box, and I then I wanted to use it again and I couldn't find it. So I pulled it out and I fell in love with it. Ever since that day, I never stopped using it, obviously. I hit pan on there. I think this is, I already forgot what my project pan was that I was doing. And I'm like, what products did I even pick? I think this was one of the products. Yeah, or am I making that up? Anyway, I wanna, I wanna use this a lot more this year and I love it so much. It's the perfect like cool tone with like, just, it's just really nice. It's a really pretty satin finish, so there's no like sheeny or glittery texture or like finish to it. It just, it's not matte. Even though it's called Sun Club Matte Bronzing Powder, it has a little bit of something to it that has just like a really pretty like satiny finish, but nothing too crazy. It's really easy to use. You can also get your big old brush and do a bunch of swirls in it and get that big satisfying, you know, feeling. And you're never gonna overdo it. It's such a nice tone, perfectly pigmented for my skin tone. And I love this so, so, so much. There are only a couple of shades, unfortunately, but this is awesome. And I found this at CVS and I just still absolutely love it. But again, I was like, no, I gotta pick Rimmel, my Rimmel uh, bronzer because it has that really pretty, like red orange undertone that I love, but if I can only pick one, I gotta go with that one. So for highlighter, ugh, I did pick two. Okay, I did pick two highlighters because I couldn't, I couldn't just pick one, I can't. Uh, for highlighter, I picked the Maybelline Master Chrome Metallic Highlighter in the shade Molten Rose Gold. You know, if I could, no, I was just gonna say if I could only pick one, it'd be this, but I have to include the other one. So this is one of my favorite highlighters of all time, and not just drugstore, but just like of any brand. It's just absolutely perfect. Oh my gosh, this lid. 
Oh yeah, I was like, the lid's about to crack off or it's already cracked off. So many broken lids, but you could tell I really used the crap out of these things. This is such an amazing texture and I think uh, Maybelline, I think, really needs to re-promote these. Like, bring out a new shade. I wish they would bring out a shade that's like, um, like something fun. Like they had a, a blue one, but it was so chunky blue glitter. It was not very nice. Like it wasn't this beautiful texture that the other ones are. I want to put this on right now. It's so pretty. Let me grab my mirror. Uh, anyway, I, I want them to re-promote these, bring out another shade, maybe like something like a nice sheen of purple or green, like something really fun because they have some really pretty shades in here. This one obviously is like the, like a little bit of a pinky one. They have a gold one that I'm actually shopping my stash for right now and I haven't even used it yet. I don't know why. Um, they also have another one that's a little more white and pearl. Oh, that one is so pretty too. The texture on these is so nice. You can do like a really soft application or you can like really build it up and blind everyone you walk by and it never has that like gray like undertone that sometimes highlighters can have it's just so pretty oh my goodness I remember when I when I first bought this I lost my mind it's all I wanted to use it's all I would talk about I love it so much and I wish Maybelline would re-promote these because I think people would go crazy for them but this is beautiful it doesn't have any glitter in it or any like shimmer particles it's just a really beautiful blinding glow. Really, really pretty. And then the other one I had to pick is the Wet n Wild Hello Halo Blush Lighter in the shade I Met Someone. This is another one of the highlighters. I just can't put this down. I use it all the time. I'm surprised the lid hasn't broken off of this one yet. So this is supposed to be like a cat. Hey, my precious. I'm trying to do something. Down there scratching. Uh, I don't know, he's like pretending, like he's trying to bury his food, even though I don't know who he's trying to hide it from. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, this is supposed to be like a blush and a highlighter, but the blush is very, very glowy. Like you could use it easily as a highlighter. I tend to, where's my brush? Dip into both of these like at once. And this is another one that is so, so beautiful. I love the tone of this. It's like really beautiful champagne with like that tiny, tiny hint of this peach color that you'll get from that side. Again, with no glitter or anything like that, it's just this beautiful, glowy, glossy, wet looking sheen. And this is so pretty. I have all of them that they have in their permanent line and I use them all the time. Like this one here I used this morning, just a little bit on the inner corner of my eye. This is the shade called Highlight Bling. Um, again, they're all different tones, but they're all uh, blushy highlighter type duos. So the, bl the blush is very, very glowy. You could also use it as a highlight. I tend to use this as the highlight and that as a blush. But with the one that I'm going to keep, my number one, the one that if I can only keep one, it's this one because both of them you could use as highlight. Love it so much. Again, I think Wet n Wild needs to re-promote these and like bring them out for summer maybe. They're really, really good. So for brows, if I could only pick one, if I could only pick one, it's the NYX Thick It Stick It Brow Mascara. I did repurchase this and I wasn't going to. I told myself not to do it because I'm trying to just use the gel that I have which is the got to be, um, what is it called? Got to be, just got, oh, got to be glued for brows and edges gel. I've just been using that one, but I miss this so much because it has a, um, a mascara type one that's kind of short and tapered. It has a lot of fibers in it and it really does thicken up my little puny brows, makes them look full and natural and I just absolutely love it. It's not open yet because I know once I open this, I'm not gonna use anything else. I think it's so, so good. I used up two of these already and I absolutely love it. I think I have a video review on this. I'll link it down below in case you wanna see it in action. Okay, again, I had, to, I had to put another thing in here. I had to pick two brow things because I just tried the NYX Brow Glue, the tinted one. This is so good. I think it's actually better than the, the regular clear brow glue. And I didn't think it was going to be, I thought this was gonna be kind of gross because I thought it was gonna be like um, the brow glue, but like a used, you know when you put your, your brow powder inside the brow glue all the time and eventually like tints it and makes it look used and cloudy? That's what I thought this was going to be, but it's not. It is what I have on my brows today and I think it's absolutely awesome. It's a lot easier to use than the brow glue is the original because the brush doesn't come out as 
loaded with glue and it's not as sticky and thick but it still holds them in place it doesn't paste them down to your face I think this is better definitely an improvement but still really 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 good it's a new one to me so I'm still using it but it quickly stole my heart but if I could only pick one it's gonna be the thicket stick it brown mascara I think no I'll keep this too just because I have to okay for foundation, so this is the one product that I included that wasn't from a drugstore brand, but I think it should still be included because for me, drugstore isn't about the price because the prices at the drugstore are not the cheapest everywhere. It, I think it's more about um, accessibility, like having an accessible amount of makeup to shop from. And I think Dollar General should be included in that conversation. So for foundation, I went with the Believe Beauty Skin Finish Foundation. And I'm shocked at myself that I'm picking this because I bought this like a year or two ago and I didn't like it very much. But I think now it was just the shade that I picked wasn't right for me. Because you know, there's not really testers there. You can't just squirt them a lot on your hand and see which one works for you. But I bought the shade Nude and I think this shade works for me so, so, so well. It's just your basic pump foundation. It's only $5. All the things in this product, okay. Everything in this line at Dollar General is $5 or less and so far the brand is pretty solid I'm glad they're still around. They're still coming out with new things, but the foundation is really nice um, Did I say it was what I'm wearing today? This is what I'm wearing today, and it has a really nice finish It's I want to say Medium ish you could probably build it up But I usually don't try to build it up too much because then you just keep layering foundation on um, if anything, two pumps is like the max I'll do if I'm trying to get the most out of it. But I do find, uh, okay, <clears throat> but I do find that throughout the day, like towards the end of my work day, my skin will look a little bit oily, a little bit shiny, like the, my natural oils are coming through, but also I think the foundation just gets a little oily throughout the day. It's so like around my nose and then this zone here, my chin, if I touch it like this, I'll feel a little bit of oil there. So just something to keep in mind. I think this could benefit a lot from a little blot later in the day, but it wears pretty well all day long. Usually by the end of my work day, it's still looking pretty good. Uh, so yeah, if I could only pick one, like solid, all around, good coverage, you could wear it light if you want to and get a little lighter application. I'm gonna go with this one. I think it's a good all around, middle of the road, could suit a lot of different skin types. And I think that one's pretty solid. So I'm gonna go with that one. If I could only keep one. Okay, for concealer, I did only pick one. I thought I was going to pick two, but I went with the number seven Lift Illuminate Serum Concealer. If I could only pick one, it's going to be this one. Um, I have here the shade Light, and I have used up few, a few tubes of this over the last couple of years. This came out a couple of years ago, and it's awesome. It's, again, a really solid concealer. I wish they would expand the shade range. Oh my god, I wish they had more shades because this is such an amazing texture, amazing finish. It feels great on the skin. Like this feels like a high-end concealer. It's really, really nice. But there's only, I think, four or five shades and all of them are pretty much like this one. There's nothing really especially light or dark and I think that's so weird because for the foundations that they have, they put out a bunch of shades in a pretty solid like range. But for the concealer, they were like, eh, it's a few shades. And I think that's kind of weird because they have another concealer that they put out probably 20 shades for. So I don't know why they did that for this one, but what are you going to do? If you have a lighter skin tone, you would absolutely love this. It's really beautiful under the eyes. It has a really nice, luxurious kind of texture, a little on the thin side, but still very uh, moisturizing. It covers, it doesn't settle into your lines if you put it under your eyes. It's really pretty. I would wear this on my whole face from time to time just to spot concealing. Beautiful, beautiful. Nothing wrong with it other than a shade range. I think a lot of people would really love this if they had more shades. Come on, number seven. Get some more shades in that. But if I could only keep one, oh my gosh, this, I, okay, an honorable mention, I have to mention the Maybelline Master Conceal Camouflaging Concealer. If I could only pick another one with the, no, are they discontinuing this? I've seen this on clearance everywhere, so. I don't know. If I could have a backup, if I could only keep one, it's this. Again, another one that's really just super luxurious feeling. This feels like a high end. It actually feels like Shiseido, like spot on with Shiseido's self-refreshing synchro concealer. You know that one? This feels and performs exactly like that one, but I, I think they're discontinuing it. I think, um, 
or I'm just crazy. I don't know, but that's my backup. That's my backup one. Okay, for blush, oh, I did pick two. I picked two. Okay. I went back and forth on this one so much on which one. If I could only pick one, what is it going to be? But I went with Revlon Naughty Nude. So I have been using this blush for years, years. I want to say 10 years minimum. Uh, this is a very classic blush for Revlon and as many times as they've redone their blush line and brought in shades and got rid of shades, this one has always stayed. Um, it's really beautiful. It's a very nude color for me, but it has a little bit of rosiness to it. It goes with everything. So whenever I don't really know what to reach for or I don't want blush to be like the focus, this is the one I always reach for. I think it's absolutely beautiful. A great formula, very underrated at the drugstore, especially underrated for Revlon too. It's a really beautiful, like finely milled formula. Like you'd almost think it was baked. It's so, so, so nice. Beautiful satin finish, nice pigmentation, but not too crazy. You can build it up. It's really, really pretty. But now that I said that, so they don't make the packaging look like this anymore. They don't include a little brush like they used to. They just have the entire square here filled with blush. But I went and looked at this, the shade Naughty Nude, and it doesn't look like this anymore, unless that one that I saw at the store was like a bad one. But so this looks very clearly like a nice nude, rosy, basic little blush, right? The one I saw at the store the other day, it looks like light yellow tan. Like a like it looks like a color that shouldn't be a blush color. It looks really weird. So I don't know what that's about. I'm gonna have to check around and see if that maybe that's just a bad one. But yeah, I would keep this but that's kind of weird that they would change up the shade that much. So I'm kind of thinking that might be just like a bad one. Just a heads up, if you're looking for that one and it looks like it's a light tan yellow color, that's not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about the nice one. Um, and then the other blush I have to mention, I have to, because it's my current obsession and it's Milani Luminoso. It is what I have on today, but I'm gonna put some more on because I'm obsessed with this blush. I did put up a video recently on the Luminoso Glow and I used the heck out of this blush on my cheeks, all over my nose, my eyes. I'll link that down below in case you want to see it in action, but I'm going to put some more on today. With this blush, you really don't even need highlighter. I know I have some on, but it's so glowy. It looks like just beaming, blinding your neighbors, beautiful coral blush. I love it so, so much. I wanna wear this every single day. It's the only thing I wanna wear, so I have to mention it because it's also just a color I haven't used in a while and now this is all I want to use are these like really pretty coral blushes. Uh, I wanna have that cockatiel vibe. Is it cockatiel or cockatoo? Cockatiel? Cockatiel, hold on, hold on. Cock it's cockatiel. I had to just look up whether it was cockatiel or cockatoo. It's cockatiel. I want the cockatiel vibe all summer. That's what I'm feeling. So I had, had, had to mention this. But you can't go wrong with any of the Milani baked blushes. They're all so beautiful. And I didn't realize that I loved them as much as I do because they're just a blush that's so reliable and always there that I reach for it and I go, yeah, it works. It's great. But I guess I just didn't realize, like, I don't know. They're awesome. And I kind of want to buy them all and do a video on them because they are, like, the bomb. Amazing. Okay, mascara, if I could only pick one, say it with me, it's number seven. I have not been able to put this mascara down ever since I bought it. Late last year, they came out with some holiday gift sets. This mascara was in there and it blew my mind in one use. So this is the full 360 Ultra Nourished Panoramic Lashes Mascara. This is what I have on today. It's pretty much what I've worn regularly since then. It is just the best formula. It's the perfect mix between wet and dry. Like it's, it's just perfect. It has this little slightly hourglass wand, which is not usually my favorite, but I think because of the type of bristles that are with it and the mascara formula, it really, it really works. You can still get all the inner corner of your lashes, the outer corner, everything. It's awesome. It lengthens, it separates, it volumizes, it thickens. It does it all and it doesn't smudge, smear, transfer, or flake. It's just the freaking bomb and it's easy to remove. It's crazy. I think this mascara would suit so many different types of lash types. 
It sells a lot and now that I'm like a believer in it, I realize why this is always flying off the shelves at the store. It's so, so good. The only one I would pick blows every other mascara out of the water, at least the drugstore. But you know, once I use it up and I try something else, like I'll move on. But right now, this is all I want to try. I want to talk about it forever. So for setting spray, again, another one I'm absolutely obsessed with, and it's the Pixi Makeup Fixing Mist. I'm obsessed with that. Uh, and I never say the word obsessed, but right now there's a couple things I'm like obsessed with. This is one of them. So. This uh, is a makeup fixing mist with rose water and green tea. They say you can use it as a primer water. I haven't tried it like that, I keep forgetting. I just really use this as a setting spray and it's a really great one if you like a wet, glowy look on your skin. Uh, this is really good for that. It will change the look of your makeup. So if you're going for something really matte, uh, this is going to like switch you over to super glowy. So just keep that in mind, but it will, um, a prolong the wear of your makeup. I absolutely love this. The sprayer is not the best, so I did pour it out into another bottle, just because after a little while, it starts spraying in all different directions, and it's not clogged up. Like, I've tried to fix this, and it just doesn't work. So poured it into another bottle, it's fine. And it does have a fragrance, so keep in mind if you want to try this out. It has like a, kind of like an old school powdery smell. Um, can't really put my finger on what it is, but it's it's there, and you will smell it as you're spraying it and then for the most of the day so just keep in mind like maybe open it give it a little spray if you want to try it out or a little sniff maybe don't spray it but yeah love that stuff if I could only pick one that's the one and then for eyeshadow I I think I just want to do a whole video on my favorite drugstore eyeshadows because I couldn't I could not pick one because I knew that no matter what I picked I would eventually be like mm, I'm tired of that I want to try something else but if I could only pick one no I was gonna go with the L'Oreal Paradise Enchanted Palette because that's one of my all-time favorite drugstore palettes. And then I was gonna go with the Maybelline Nudes of New York palette because that's another like super solid, awesome formula palette. Then I was like L'Oreal La Palette Nude, another one, like top tier, amazing formula. CoverGirl Shimmering Sands, like there are so, so many that I love and I just couldn't pick one because I was like, there's too many that I really love, but I'll give this one a little shout out, the CoverGirl Shimmering Sands palette or little trio here. This is a really solid one. If you're like in a rush, you don't like spending a lot of time on your eyeshadow, you don't want something you can mess up. This is so easy to use, literally just like blob your brush in here, brush it on even sloppily. Like I just go back and forth like this a few times and it's, it's easy to use. Nicely pigmented, it'll show up on your lids, but it won't be too crazy. It's a really solid palette, but as I picked that one, I was like, there are so many I really want to talk about. So that's the one I'm mentioning today, but there are so many out there that I really love that I, I, I couldn't just pick one, couldn't just pick one. But that's it. That is my, if I could only pick one drugstore edition updated for 2023. Let me know some of the drugstore makeup. If you could only pick one, let me know what it would be in each category. I would love to know. Just leave me a comment and let me know. But that is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss my next one. And I will see you later in another video. Goodbye.